Osmani from uh, more than 13 years of experience in genetic field. Um, worked in Berlin in Charité University Hospital, having deep expertise in whole exome, whole genome, and RACGH testing. Followed by uh, moving to Ministry of Health in Oman. So we were having deep exposure on the genetic testing in the region and the importance of the genetic uh, testing in the region and how should be tailored to the needs of the local population. How genetic testing is different and the setup is different compared to Caucasian or Afro-American population. <coughs> Excuse me, you can uh, hear me? You can hear me? Okay, thank you very much. So, goal of our uh, presentation or goal of our uh, meeting today is to increase awareness within the medical community about the current challenges in the reproductive genomics field. Also explain shortly why actually genetic and uh, testing should be tailored to the cultural or local populations and explore how recent advantage and uh, genetic uh, technologies can increase and shape the reproductive genomic uh, field. So here, this slide is actually showing our issues which we do have in our daily practice in UAE. And uh, definitely we see a lot of patients with recurrent IVF failures, with recurrent miscarriages, with, uh, we, we do see patients with such huge uh, medical history where the reports uh, show no embryo detected or no DNA detected. Uh, we see that uh, there is also missing documentation like test requisition uh, forms, lack of consent forms, lack of patient consent forms for such important and critical testing like which is PGTM or PGTA. Uh, we can see also that uh, in our daily practice, PGDM, which is very important uh, uh, testing, is done sometimes within 24 hours or 48 hours. Okay, so this is not needed. We can see that PGTM testing is done within 24 hours or 48 hours. We can see also that there is uh, embryo mosaicism, which is uh, providing definitely false positive or false negative result. And we can see also that many laboratories still using old technologies, which are fish or um, other, other te techniques. So one, like uh, here we have some examples and uh, we can see that sometimes uh, some laboratories will put wrong methodology. Uh, we can see that uh, some labs uh, are not testing all embryos and biopsies provided. We can see that there are some tests which are checking only five chromosomes, not checking all chromosomes, so patients coming and saying, I was having normal embryo, but so why I miscarried? Why uh, 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 I was having all normal uh, uh, samples and results and still there is failure? So when we will go deeply to the reporting and the methodology applied by different genetic laboratories, we can discover that many techniques or many chromosomes, anomalies, like, like uh, chromosome uh, 22, trisomy 15, uh, trisomy 16, all of them are missed. So there is no, no uh, surprise if we are checking only five chromosomes, which is 13, 18, 21, X and Y we are giving normal results to the patient, and uh, then patient will miscarriage. 
early miscarriage because we are completely avoiding and not checking and not looking for a uh, uh, right answer. So here other uh, uh, challenge is, this is again from our practice in Dubai, that uh, Spanish or European or American laboratories rejecting sometimes preparing the DNA probes for families, for the local families, uh, for PGTM testing. They are not prepared to, pre to, to prepare the setup because their expertise in, is working with Caucasian population. So when uh, they are getting very extremely rare case from a GCC region, tribal case, they are just uh, rejecting this case, saying we are not just able to prepare the probes, the DNA probes, we are not able to, 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 to go through PGTM testing. So this, is, this issue is showing how it's important that know-how is here and the genetic testing is done in the region, not somewhere in United States or Germany or uh, Spain. So here we have uh, five critical steps. The first step is for sure genetic uh, consultation. The step number two is uh, choice. Are we going through biopsy day three or biopsy day three, uh, the biopsy day five? What kind of transportations we will choose? We will put our biopsies on Petri dish or do the tubing. Uh, what kind of technique we will apply? Is it PCR, is it NGS, is it RACGH, or it's FISH? So, and at the end, quality of the report. So, it's all these uh, five factors are very critical uh, to achieve the, the satisfactory results and diagnosis. So, here, for example, I don't know the reality uh, in Bahrain, but in the UAE, what we've seen, that there are different solutions of transportation. Some laboratories are putting the bio on Petri dish and transport uh, the uh, biopsies at room temperature. You can imagine that room temperature in, in this region is not 24 degrees most of the year. So, some laboratories are not doing tubing still, and thanks to doing tubing, definitely you can see here that there is special transportation box which is allowing to put the biopsy and keep the biopsy in minus 20, minus 18 degree. So by only improving this step of transportation, we can absolutely increase the clinical outcome of the of the test because if we for example collected 10 biopsies we will put for on petri dish transport let's say from abu dhabi to dubai on at room temperature out of 10 cells maybe we will detect only 50 percent of the M uh, dna and we will uh, give to the patients or give to the doctor only five satisfactory report uh, and might be ten. So how we are working? So definitely we are trying always uh, apply new technologies, being up to date, the know-how is uh, in, in, in the region, so be building the customer loyalty by providing the specialized genetic testing and the consultation guidance. So here it's uh, one of our examples. So we are not reproductive uh, genomics laboratory only. We have deeply uh, background, deep understanding of human genetics. So we are offering whole exome sequencing. We have RHCGH facilities. We do uh, NIPT. We uh, care about uh, POC, miscarriage, uh, female, uh, male f fertility problems, uh, 
doing uh, cancer prevention, doing targeted uh, therapies. So it's the full fledge of the genomic services. And one of them is reproductive genetics. But just I want to stress the point that reproductive genomics, it's not only PGTA and PGTM. The whole story and the, the whole journey starting from identification of the problem. So identification of the problem in the family might be single gene disorder, might, might be multiple gene disorder, might be uh, chromosomal uh, uh, abnormalities. So very important is to, to, to evaluate the case one by one, especially the cases with recurrent miscarriages or recurrent IVF failures or families who, who are already having affected child to, to guide uh, IVF expert, gynecology and the family which diagnostic uh, pathway to choose. And as you can see, pathways are quite complicated and definitely um, the right guidance is quite important because thanks to that we will give satisfactionally results to the family but also the pathway will be cost effective and time effective. So one of the uh, beautiful the approach of PGTM testing might be um, like disease prevention approach especially that in this region the prevalence of genetic disorders is high. It's much higher than in Caucasian or Afro-American population because of different reasons. Consanguinity, there is tribal communities, there was <coughs> ge geographic isolation, so there are different, different uh, factors which are uh, uh, causing that the prevalence of the genetic disorder is higher and many, many of the mutation or disorders are unique and extremely rare and it's completely different genes and different mutations involved in the, in the diagnosis. So what we see in Europe, let's say for osteogenesis imperfecta, this is a dominant disorder. Here it will be autosomal recessive. So the, 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 the first pre-IVF workup, pre-PGTM pre workup, it's extremely important and it's extremely important to be done by laboratory or by genetician, evaluated by the genetician who is having deep understanding of the genetic makeup of the local population. Any comments? Because I... I yes? Ah, okay. So here, coming back to, to this point, because at the first slide, we mentioned that some PGTM in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi is done within 24 hours or 48 hours. So imagine that uh, this family is uh, uh, having uh, uh, these problems, affected children, and then we will uh, do fresh transfer, offering fresh transfer for this family. And we are in a hurry. There is uh, a lot of positive, uh, like uh, biops false positive, false negative uh, uh, results from, from uh, this uh, 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 biopsies day three. Many of them are uh, dying anyway. So being in hurry, providing this kind of services within 48 hours is becoming just a commercial uh, service. It's not a disease prevention approach. That's why, for example, we are trying always to, to evaluate case by case. And for families, for example, from Alain or from the region where there is high consanguinity, we are trying to offer always, let's say, up to three cycles and, all, and release uh, the report one time and charge one time. Because sometimes it's like that, that they will 
to only uh, uh, be able to prepare, clinic will be able to prepare only, let's say, two embryos from the first cycle. Then from the second cycle, it will come one biopsy. From the third cycle, will come maybe only three biopsies. So overall, even from this cumulative three cycles, we are able to prepare and collect maybe seven biopsies. But if someone is offering 48 hour or 24 hour PGTM service, then they will just check one biopsy or two biopsy and say there is no embryo to be, t there is no healthy embryo uh, uh, to be transferred. Tr exactly. It will be chargeable and then say you need to go through the second cycle or third cycle. Yes, doctor. Not always. No. Actually, we are facing a very big problem in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. It's not some clinical people telling the patients with huge amount of drugs for the stimulation. Yes. We end up by having something like 20, 25 suicides out of this because 18 embryos. And ob obviously, oh. Oh. Uh, obviously, obviously, you cannot biopsy all of these embryos. You can, but it takes a long time. Some some centers do something like ten case, cases per day. Ten cases. So if you are talking about ten, let us say five of them, and each each patient is producing something like fifteen eggs. Five times fifteen. Imagine the embryos is sitting on the egg machine doing biopsy for five times. 15 times is like 70, 70 embryos. How efficient this technology is to give you a proper biopsy? This is number one. Uh, number two, I always felt very, very scared, really, of getting a result in 48 hours for PGT. And sometimes the uh, families come with uh, known mutation. mutation. Mm -hmm. And they got it from somewhere else. Yes. And it is practice. It's not that I should do it again, familiar. I should do the parental uh, screening to check on the mutation mm -hmm. and make sure it is correct. No? Mm -hmm. It is taken for granted. And I'm not going to say who's doing it or who's not doing it, but these are some of the problems you are facing. Getting results for eight hours is very fully agree and uh, this is exactly what uh, uh, I'm sharing. I I'm sharing my uh, personal experience because really it's uh, patients in UAE coming, uh, going through 7, 10, 12 IVF failures or repeated miscarriages and they are going, uh, uh, coming to our clinic and to our laboratory with such uh, medical history, such huge medical history. And they are sharing and sharing the previous reports or previous uh, uh, visits, and they were in one clinic and another clinic and another another, mm -hmm. and either they were uh, tested by very old techniques, or it's not out. Really? Yes, it it's yes. Really? There are still the centers which uh, are doing fish. Okay and RACGH, so it's it's not out of the market, so unfortunately. Market. So this is one of the reasons of false positive or false negative uh, results, for sure. And another reason is, again, this 24, 48 uh, uh, hours PGTM, we, where we are testing only a few samples, and we are doing first a nucleoid screening, follow, by a single gene disorder, but it's about sing, single uh, simple statistic. More embryo you will give us, more chance that we will give you the satisfactory result. Yeah. As simple as it, but if we are getting two, three, how? How we can uh, get, uh, uh, give you satisfactory result? 
So it's all about just commercial misuse of the lack of awareness of the system, of the patients, and... The problem that we know that, we know it. And we are sure that the commercial elements playing the game in all this. Clinicians know it. We are in the lab know it. But there is no regulation or bylaws to control CBT in Bahrain. Still not yet. We started IVF regulations in 2004. Only 2017 we got the... The, the agreement comes with the patent. It's a law now. It's a law. Yeah. And everybody goes like this. Oh, now we, we are looking forward to uh, construct something for CBT as well. But we need, uh, of course, uh, collaboration from all the people well, concerned. It's an it's extremely beautiful technique. And this is also why we are stressing the point that this beautiful technique can be really applied in this region as an alternative to prenatal diagnosis because prenatal diagnosis can be used in Europe where maybe people will not have uh, uh, some ethical or religious concern about pregnancy termination but here why why to go through prenatal diagnosis then if we can uh, select the embryo and select the healthy embryo before pregnancy happens so this beautiful technique actually should be highly regulated and uh, offered to the society as a disease prevention program. So here it's again also the stressing the point about data security and data confidentiality because again especially outsourcing uh, genetic lab, uh, data exomes, uh, genomes to other commercial companies uh, might be resold, might be misused, might be uh, used by pharma companies or by uh, insurance companies. And there are now many, many articles even in uh, uh, New York Times just recently that uh, Pentagon mention and issues certain internal memo uh, to their um, employees and soldiers that please don't uh, order genetic testing from unknown uh, or laboratories uh, abroad just for security reasons so this is uh, here now we are opening the chapter of uh, uh, how we can overcome your problems and how we can overcome and simplify the, the PGTA and PGTM services. So we are definitely uh, facing since few years very strong non-invasive trend in medicine. So we know that uh, amniocentesis was replaced or being replaced by non-NIPT. So we know that uh, classical uh, tissue biopsy being slowly, slowly replaced by liquid biopsy. Liquid, liquid biopsy is uh, um, showing us uh, the nature of the tumor more in more uh, uh, in more informative way than the point uh, uh, cell biopsy. And now we are uh, facing also non-invasive uh, prenatal uh, testing, PGTA testing. So where we will avoid the embryo biopsy and we will take the um, uh, spent media and uh, test uh, sequence deeply by next generation sequencing and uh, get the results. So I just want to talk today about one of this innovation, which is already available in our facility. So definitely, uh, non-invasive PGTA is a future. And as doctor just mentioned about uh, the, the time and technique required to do the biopsy of the embryo. So imagine now that uh, these biopsies uh, are not required anymore. And you are just uh, taking the spent media uh, where the embryo was cultured 
or for three or five days. So how it will simplify the IVF work, the I, uh, clinic work, and uh, how many times, uh, uh, like time can be uh, uh, saved and uh, many, many factors, uh, cost, um, that the lasers will be not that much required anymore, and so on. So definitely, we are saying this non-invasive PGTA, it will be like a sun compared to other technique, the classical PGTA, and compared to fish and RACGH, which, believe me, is still used <laughs> in the daily practice. So, what is the biggest disadvantage of PGTA, the classical invasive one? Of course, you need special skilled embryologists, you need uh, very expensive machines, and very important also, I think all of you are aware about embryo mosaicism, right? So we know that uh, doing the embryo biopsy right now, we are taking the which cells? Which cells we are taking? <coughs> exactly. So, but these uh, cells are not always same like ICM. And uh, the future baby will be arrived from ICM cells, right? So we are, ta by taking the biopsy, the classical biopsy, we might generate false negative or false positive results because we are not checking ICM cells. We are checking only TE cells by invasive uh, technique. So this is uh, one of our study done in, in our facility with one of uh, IVF clinic in Abu Dhabi. They were donating the, uh, like they were embryo. The biopsy was done three times from the same embryo by three different embryologists. And we were not having cor concordance between uh, the results. This is proving already published, well published and well known, phenomena of embryo mosaicism. So how we can overcome this? So this is already, proven that, first of all, the cell-free DNA is already discovered in culture media of the uh, embryo. So in day three or on day, day five, we can find the cell-free DNA. This is already proven. And this cell-free DNA is originating not only from TE, but also from ICM. So by doing cell-free DNA, we are not only avoiding necessity of doing biopsy, so it's completely non-invasive process, we don't need training uh, for the embryologist to do the bi biopsy. We are avoiding the trauma given to embryo of taking the biopsy. And most important, we are checking the two types of cells, ICM and TE, not only TE. So this is also the way how our partners in the United States um, designed the experiment. So they were having embryos, um, they did the biopsy, and they did uh, PGTA for the classical invasive uh, uh, biopsy day five. Then the embryos were donated and they uh, took the spent media and they took also the whole embryo. So we were having three origin of, of the experiment. The first is uh, classical biopsy day five, second is spent media, and the third is whole embryo. Okay, so uh, the study, the validation uh, study shown that there is highest core condense between the 
spent media results and whole embryo, then TE invasive biopsy versus whole embryo. So this is already proven and this was uh, done in United States and they just released uh, now the product which is uh, already used in clinical practicing. We will share the, the list of the uh, reference uh, clinics in Canada, in United States and uh, other countries where non-invasive PGTA is already used in clinical practice. And very important point, apart from being easy, safe, fa fast, uh, definitely uh, we are completely, not maybe completely, but all we are avoiding the, the, the problem of embryo mosaicism. So this, this is disappearing. So here we have the uh, comparison, the comparison between invasive and non-invasive PGTA and definitely training experience in biopsy operation is not that much required anymore because we just uh, taking 20 microliter of the spent media so it's much easier. Definitely it's ma more, more safe for the embryo itself because it's avoiding um, the trauma given and stimulation of the, of the embryo. And definitely we can see, again, this is I think the most important point that we are checking both cells uh, origin. So not only T, but uh, ICM as well. So by, by this, uh, the, the spent media and the cell DNA found in spent media, it's much more representative the embryo than just biopsy. It's exactly very similar like this liquid biopsy versus the tissue biopsy of the tumor. Tumor is uh, very heterogeneous, right? So having different, different mutation. So when uh, oncologist will take or surgeon will take the point tissue biopsy not necessarily this biopsy will reflect the whole tumor and the same is with uh, uh, non-invasive uh, PGTA and taking the uh, DNA from the spent media because both cells lines TE and ICM going through apoptosis so they are releasing their DNA to the spent media. So this is the source of the DNA. So definitely it's uh, very safe, it's very sensitive. We are avoiding mosaicism problem. It's very cost effective and definitely it's uh, easier and fast and that's that's why we can, like, not we, but IVF clinic can do much more biopsies per day also. What is the percentage of the spent media? Yes. What is the percentage of process to the DNA to ICM DNA? Is much higher than mm -hmm. So uh, it's d different uh, um, statements, but uh, depend because it's it's more or less uh, half half, okay. more or less half half. But there are sm slight differences in terms of apoptosis. Mm -hmm. So normal uh, uh, cells will uh, uh, make apoptosis less yes. than abnormal. Mm -hmm. So if there is mosaicism, then the the uh, my, the difference might be bigger because if, let's say, ICM is abnormal and TE is normal, then it will be not balanced. But if it's uh, euploid, then it will be more or less half-half. Uh, How do you differentiate between the DNA coming from its origin, mm -hmm. ICM and TE? The spent medium contains yes. both types of DNA. Mm -hmm. 
how would I know that if I have mosaic embryo, mm -hmm. this mosaic is coming from inner cell mass or from protected egg? Okay, so this study exactly where um, Harvard people and which now uh, establish the products and so they are Harvard origin, then they were working in Netera, so they have very deep expertise in non-invasive uh, prenatal testing already. So they uh, went before releasing this product, which uh, is present in our facility, they went through very extensive uh, uh, comparisons. So to answer your question, by comparing that we have one embryo, we took the TE biopsy only, we took spent media and the whole embryo. So by this, uh, they were able to differentiate and catch the mosaicism and knew that if TE is giving uh, mosaic result or spent media and whole embryo results are same and T is different. So by, by this kind of... Uh, hmm? Yeah, sure. That's why that's why we are not. Uh, uh, yeah, that's why we are not. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we know that. So one again. First of, because at the end we are not research uh, facility. No, no. So that's why, uh, like uh, this uh, company went through this extensive validation and extend extensive studies, and they were able to to prove that what they are catching in spent media is the DNA uh, from both both lines. This is what they proved. But in our practice, daily practice, even in my daily practice. I don't need this uh, to be proven because at the end I'm giving the results of the PGTA and if and I know by this study and by, by their experience that by analyzing spent media DNA cell free DNA from spent media will give me better results and better outcome than doing the PGTA on Biopsy. I agree with you 100%. Yes. In the last PGTIF, the last two. Yes. It was, there was a big discussion about to return the mosaic, not to return the mosaic. Mm -hmm. And even in, in, from the, the biggest uh, clinicians in the field of PGT, like Shemra Sahrama, mm -hmm. she seldom had the answer. Exactly. You yes. But you, as a PGT lab, give you the result that this embryo is mosaic. Yes. Now it's up to patient and me. Yes. After thorough consultation, to decide return or not to return. Absolutely. But if there, if there is anything that can be done in the future to tell me that this mosaic is coming out of the from the process, then it will release. Mm -hmm. and yes. This inner cell mass is intact. Yes. Uh, this is my my. In the future, I hope. So I do believe I do believe that by replacing invasive by non-invasive, mm -hmm. definitely we will uh, um, avoid problem of mosaicism <coughs> coming from TE only. Okay. This is the the aim and beauty of the non-invasive approach because it's already proven that by cell-free DNA in spent media, we will check both uh, cell lines. So by, and another point, if we will detect mosaicism, we will catch mosaicism. If we, what we should do with this kind of embryo, this is different dilemma. This is another issue. But, but here, the most important is not to catch mosaicism even. It's about to, to avoid false positive and false negative re results. Because if we are take, uh, I will just go back to this slide here. If we are taking now the, the, the biopsy 
from uh, day five, let's say, or scenario from day three, then we are not touching at all ICM. This is 100%. So we might uh, provide false negative results, which will cause that either uh, woman will uh, miscarriage or will deliver disabled baby, right? Or in the case of fa false positive, you, we will discard uh, normal embryo. So, so in the first case, where you have uh, mosaic uh, chocolate sugar, let us take 10 billion from this embryo. Exactly. You analyze it, mm -hmm. you tell me it's mosaic Yes. Sugar. Yes. Because I can intact sugar is yes. False. Yes. And let's say it's 30% of trisomy 18. Mm. What we will do? This my role is to deliver the results only. It's very difficult. It's this is very difficult. Yeah. So this is opening completely different topic. Right. What w not we yeah. but uh, community and uh, and clinician and gynecologist and IVF uh, experts should do with mosaic embryo results. Some doctors don't want to know, even yeah. just they want to know uh, it's negative positive, <laughs> really. And e and saying by default, if there is any mosaic uh, report, don't disclose by default, uh, uh, judge and classify as uh, positive. So some doctors don't want to be in, in this dilemma. Some doctors want everything. All mitochondrial uh, uh, scores and all information. So there are different schools and different mentality and different approach uh, for sure. But here the, the most important is avoid. Avoid the situation that we are giving false negative or false positive uh, results. This is from our side. This is improving our performance. But uh, for clinic, for IVF laboratory, it's uh, faster, it's uh, easier, yeah. and for sure cheaper. And more healthy for the embryo. Definitely. And more healthy because even, and you know more than me because some of you are embryologists, not all embryos will be classified to do biopsy, right? Mm -hmm. So how many of them we are skipping? How many of them we are avoiding? But taking the media, it's much easier. So we are increasing the number. Mm -hmm. And by increasing the number, if we are dealing with PGTM uh, cases, definitely we are increasing the chance of uh, giving very satisfactory results to the family. So the last topic is, and this is the, the, um, ah, the list of uh, reference list uh, from United States, Canada, Mexico, uh, IVF centers, which are already using uh, non-invasive uh, solution. As per request, we can share this uh, over the email with uh, all of you. And, but uh, here I would like to, to uh, talk very shortly, only two slides, about alternative to fish. Believe me or not, fish is still alive. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> old is gold. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely it's, but we really, we want to adjust ourselves and because like we know that some clinics or and we cannot we are not blaming or pointing out on someone that uh, uh, it's no stigma with fish it's about uh, uh, price it's about um, region it's it's about also um, better to do fish than do nothing so there are some countries there are some clinics which cannot afford PGTA testing. There are some families which are not covered by insurance and they cannot afford uh, NGS. So by for these families, we offered and develop uh, uh, alternative to fish. It's molecular approach 
to check not only five chromosomes, but on also 13. Uh, so we are checking 13, 18, 21, 15, 16, 22. So we are covering the chromosomes which are uh, related with most common trisomies plus with uh, miscarriage. So by this, and again, the PCR solution, molecular solution, it's much more subjective, it's cheaper, it's faster, and much more sensitive and accurate than cytogenetic uh, uh, probes examination. So the biggest clinical benefits for, for this uh, solution is that we are catching early miscarriage uh, chromosomes and it's definitely faster, cheaper, more accurate, and having higher diagnostic uh, yield. And again, this solution is available for certain solutions, for certain families. Um, let's say there is no fertility problem, there is no problem with uh, recurrent miscarriages, or there is no any genetic uh, history, but someone wants to do just simple gender selection. By the we can apply this uh, technique and assure them that uh, they will have baby boy or baby girl, but... Uh, can you do gender selection, am I right? Yes. It's allowed? It's allowed. Not for medical reasons? Yes. Because here it is restricted to medical reasons. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, it's not, not allowed. So it means it's allowed. It's open. It's open, but it's uh, not covered by insurance. I will say like that. So yes, yes. PG, so PGTA, PGTM is covered by insurance, but gender selection will be not covered by insurance. It's a package. Yes. So it's, it's a package, but definitely uh, if someone will uh, uh, choose, the doctor will choose and select the gender selection as a reason for PGTA and submit to the insurance company, it will be absolutely rejected. But that's why we are, this is uh, offered to the cash patients. That's why it's, it's definitely, it's important that it will be price sensitive, it will be cost effective, fast, but at the same time giving uh, very accurate uh, results covering and avoiding uh, the dilemma or uh, situations that they will be scarred. So at least we are covering the, the most common chromosomes were related with most common uh, abnormalities. Failure or the current abortion. Yes. But all of them are sexual. Exactly. It's only titles used to cover. The I, it's just because they want to up, uh, uh, they want to uh, show that they are not doing sex selection. There is the law for this to do a sex selection per se. But you don't have, and unfortunately, you don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. Covering either sex selection or anything else related to infertility. Uh, so yeah, but yeah. De definitely this solution. That's why we are putting this as a uh, innovation number two. This is uh, dedicated usually to the uh, families uh, without any problems, who just uh, went through the IVF uh, protocol and treatment just for this purpose but by doing molecular alternative to fish, we are assuring them that they will get uh, very, very accurate uh, diagnosis, which is very cheap, fast, and flexible, because we can ex uh, um, uh, um, extend number of chromosomes to be checked. So we can check XY only, 
we can check five chromosome, we can check eight chromosome. So we are much you, more you flexible. Yeah. No. You don't do fish. No. I'm, 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 we are not doing fish. So when you say five chromosome, eight chromosome? So this is by PCR. No, by PCR. So this is PCR. Okay. It's PCR, it's molecular PCR, and probes are designed for different chromosomes. So we are really very flexible. It might be only XY. It might be XY 13, 18, 21, which is called five chromosome, and extended catching uh, 15, 16, 22, which we called uh, avoiding the risk of uh, early miscarriage. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Sister Carolina, for the presentation. I think everybody has enjoyed it. I think we can leave some time for questions. Anybody has questions? Anybody has?